imposter syndrome based, uh, based on the Bible or anything that you have experienced in your life, right? So now we're in this time of life that now we can collaborate. And for me, that's like a dream come true because just the beginning, right? Because we're, there's two different personalities, but with big dreams, that's what we have in common. Big dreams and big goals, and we're making it happen in our own ways. So I want to introduce Bianca. Welcome to stage. Hello, everyone. Hi. All right. I'm excited. Thank you, Cindy. I'm very privileged and honored to be here with every single one of you. As you know, when there's two or more gathered in Jesus' name, he is here. So I believe that he's going to talk to you personally, um, as he has been speaking to me as well. When Cindy asked me, you know, can you come over and talk about um, imp imposter syndrome? I've heard it before. But honestly, I just there's a reason why God is telling me through Cindy to speak about this. And, you know, I hope that you guys are able to receive. And if we can just pray, um, if you can close your eyes, we'll just pray um, to welcome the Holy Spirit. So Heavenly Father, we just thank you for today. We know and we recognize that you are here, Holy Spirit. We we put ourselves aside and we focus just on what you want to speak to us about that you will touch our hearts to to speak to our minds as well that whatever it is that you want to do i put my, i set myself aside and i just focus on you and what you want to say father and we just give you the glory we know that you are here because in your word it says that when there's two or more gathered in your name and father there's more than two here Father, that we will ask you to come and speak to us. So we just give you the glory. We open our hearts. We open our understanding so that you can come and speak and penetrate the heart that something will be changed and transformed in us. And every single person that is here and myself, that you will bring a transformation that we will we'll not leave the same way that we enter into this Zoom. This is a divine appointment by you, Holy Spirit. So thank you. We glorify you and we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. If you believe it, just begin to say amen right there. Um, if you can interact in the chat, go ahead, give God the glory. Um, you know, I thank God and I thank my sister. I remember, um, I don't know about you guys, but when we always gather together, either in birthdays and Thanksgiving and Christmas, we always pray, right? We always pray over the food, at least over the food, right? We pray at least the food. Father, thank you for the food and gathering us together. And it's funny because the Lord reminded me, I think it was maybe two years ago in, in Cindy's birthday. And, you know, they asked me to pray for her. And then, I don't know, the Holy Spirit put something in me to declare a word that God is going to take her into her calling. And it was crazy that I'm like, I even said a pastor. I don't know what it is, Cindy. I said the word pastor because I still didn't understand that he, God had this plan for her. And for me to be able to see the transformation that has happened, you know, obviously I always knew that she was hard worker. She was always a manager. Um, you know, she would always be the nucleus of the family, always bringing people together. And, you know, that is a part of her strength. But I, I knew that there was still a lot more for her as a leader, that she was going to impact many women like it's happening right now. And so I just want to give God glory. And I want to say to Cindy, I'm really proud. And for everybody that is here, amazing that you chose on a Wednesday uh, 7 p.m. to join in and to really you know allow God to make you into that person that he has called you to to be and to humble yourself to recognize that you do need a coach you do need mentorship that you cannot do it alone and above all things that we can be you know together and be in each other's lives that we can put God first and it's very important and um, I just want to introduce myself. Um, I'm Bianca Picado, Cindy's sister. Um, I just turned 30, so, you know, um, I gave, thank you, you know, it was August 12th, so I just turned 30. Um, and basically, you know, I gave the Lord my 20s. I gave the Lord all my 20s. Obviously, it was not easy. Um, <laughs> you know, I was a rebel. I, it was a very... Um, I'll, I'll just share my testimony. It was very hard for me to let go of, you know, um, I would just party a lot, and, you know, even from middle school, I would just go to the clubs and all this and just drinking, hanging out with the wrong crowds. And literally, um, I don't know how the Lord <laughs> brought me here, but he has kept me here. And I just give God the glory because he took me from a place where 
I literally was bound into having anxiety for, oh, girls, what are we going to do this weekend? My weekends used to start on Wednesday nights. I would go from bar to bar every single day from Wednesdays. Mondays and Tuesdays, I guess, you know, I didn't do anything. But from Wednesday, La Covacha, my sister knows about what I'm talking about. <laughs> There's this club nearby where we used to live that it was ladies, ladies night. So you knew we were going to be there drinking. And I started that life like literally like 15 or 14 in clubs. And, you know, I, I never really was not a confident person. So I would, you know, skip the line. I will go to the front like I was the promoter, like I own the club. And I would just like go, oh, the drinks. Yeah, keep them coming, you know. So the Lord literally removed me from that anxiety of like, what are we going to do? Like that fear of missing out, you know. Oh, I need to find my identity in the in getting approval. Oh, Ilsia, she heard of the Kovacha. There you go. <laughs> so, you know, I always had to, to be with the in crowd. I had to be with the popular kids. I had to, everybody to know my name, to know, you know, who I was, whether I acknowledged you or not. Literally, a lot of people would tell me, oh, you know, you look like a bee. You know, just by looking at me because I was very standoffish and, you know, but the Lord has really transformed my life into not, you know, not being in that men's approval or seeking to be always sought after, but into put myself in a hidden way so I can bring value so that I can find my value in who I am and who God has called me to be. Right. So um, right now I actually am working with my ministry, um, King Jesus ministry. I supervise the women's ministry. So how that happened, I have no idea, but the Lord did it. <laughs> the Lord did it. And it's thousands and thousands of women um, that I am able to, you know, to work with. So it's very fulfilling. I feel that the Lord has, as many of you can relate, there's a season for everything in, in every season you also, your identity gets tested. Can you agree with me? Your identity from season to season, it's always gonna be tested. So imagine when I started this job, which is sought after to be close to this person is something that, you know, a lot of people would dream of, would want to be uh, around the people that I'm around with. And I just humble myself to understand that God, if you call me to be here, it's not at all my own merit. It's not about, you know, what I'm capable of or my abilities. I'll believe for your favor. I'll believe for your grace that you are the one that's going to keep me. If you brought me here, you will keep me here. Right. So I, I'm not going to say everything was, um, you know, super easy. It wasn't. But my identity got tested. There's going to be so many things. And if you believe it, receive this word. I really do feel the Holy Spirit is going to do something. And I know by the identity as a daughter of God that whatever I prophesy, it shall happen in the name of Jesus. So if you're believing for a breakthrough, I declare over you guys that you will have favor with people that you would never otherwise have. That the Lord is going to open doors that you cannot open yourself. It is going to be the favor of God just coming over you. And yes, it's going to be a test in your identity. You're going to feel like, Lord, why me? That's what I ask myself. Lord, why me? There's so many people more capable than me. But then, then that's where the enemy, right? That the, the, the one that wants to take us out of the will of God will come and say, you know, why you? You don't qualify. The imposter syndrome will keep you in constant fear and it will paralyze you into the way of thinking that, no, that's not for me. When God has called you to do this. So I struggled. I, you know, my background in, in college, I, I graduated in FIU. If you're from Miami, it's a really good university here. I did chemistry. I'm a chemist. So the fact that like I literally went from science into working at church. When I told my, you know, my grandma is like, my mom to, to this day, she's asked me, oh, but what happened, you know, to your degree? And I'm like, well, God called me to do this. I'm sorry. Like, and then another thing that happened is in the transition was that the Lord spoke to me like, Bianca, 
what I'm calling you to do is to impact many people and in the lab or even in the hospital, you will not get to do that. Even though that is amazing, the doctors, we think we're thankful for them, the scientists, but what I'm calling you to do, you're going to have to believe. And the Lord showed me that I was going to go to medical school. I was going to study medicine and that was my path. That's why I did a chemistry degree, you know, my bachelor's, it was, it was hard. It's not an easy uh, major. So then I'm like, Lord, you're showing me that I could become that doctor, but that's not, and it will be in my own efforts, in my own abilities, because I, I thought I didn't need the Lord for that, because I thought that myself, I could do it by myself. But the Lord he, he literally put me here and it's like, you're going to have to trust me in this path. And this is what I'm calling you to do, because I want you to, to use your voice as my vessel. The Lord spoke to me to to really, you know, get rid of all the other things that I wanted to to see what he wants for my life. So, like I said, when I started this job, when I started, you know, in this ministry, having this amount of access, I asked the Lord, why me? Why? So I was always I was put under pressure of my identity as a daughter. It's going to happen to you. It's going to happen to you as like, why me? There's so many, or maybe you might say, there's so many coaches out there. Why am I different? I don't know. Can we be honest here? You've thought about it yourself. There's so many coaches. Am I going to make it? Well, let me tell you, if you know that, you know that, you know that God has called you into this, he's going to make it happen. I don't know if you've heard um, the saying, like, if God calls you to it, he's going to pay the bill for it. He's going to pay it. And that's what I've noticed. I'm like, Look, I didn't have a car. I was, a, I didn't have a car. I didn't have a house. Literally, I, I don't know if Cindy has shared. I lost my house to a hurricane. So there was a transition where I didn't have anywhere to live. I didn't have a car. I didn't have a job for a very long time. I was just studying. And the Lord, as I said yes to him, he has provided all that and more. Before 30, you know, I got, I got married and I, we have our home now before 30 we own our home and you know now i have my car which gives me the ability to move from places to places and now another thing is that when i was in in college my my focus i thought the success was the money becoming a doctor but then the lord shifted me and it's like it's about the purpose so how many people you can impact right so there's a change of mentalities and a change of focus that happens when you decide to walk into the identity that God has for you. So um, I did, the Lord did give me a few things that I want to, um, to speak about. And um, basically a lot of things that happen when we have this imposter syndrome is that we're intimidate, intimidated by men. And it'll have you literally like you're digging your head under the ground because you aren't afraid to shine when you have that, when you have intimidation from men, where you're comparing yourself. You're intimidated what others are gonna say, right? And the thing that with when you walk into a place, you're supposed to own it. It's supposed to be like, God called me here. I have the grace and favor of God. I have something to give another person. Another thing is that when you find your identity in God, it can never be taken away from you. When you develop that as a daughter of God, nobody can take that away from you, okay? Another thing is that when you base your value on God, you won't seek men's approval because you're grounded. You're, you are steadfast with him. And the good thing about the Lord is that he accepts us as we are. We don't have to perform. We don't have to, you know, be other person than ourselves. We just got to be ourselves and let him work through us. That's it. So now I want to ask you guys, I know that we all have seasons of testing, of trials and tribulations. I want to ask you, like, when can you recognize yourself having that imposter syndrome? Like, I want you to reflect this is where the Lord is going to speak to you and bring to your mind, oh, you know what? This is the time where it started. What, what, is, what are your insecurities? Maybe write it down. 
many times when I have, you know, a lot of fears, I'll write it down in a piece of paper and I just start creating a list of all my fears. And then I tear that, that paper out prophetically. I'm declaring that those fears, all the insecurities are being broken out of my life. So that's a good exercise for you to do. It's worked wonders for me. Okay. Uh, is there something like my sister said that happened in your childhood? I believe in deliverance, meaning like there's inner healing to happen, you know? So there's there's stuff from our childhood that needs to be exposed in order to be removed. Don't hide under it, right? Don't hide under it, but let it come out. Maybe rejection. Um, I think that um, intimidation and this imposter syndrome, it comes from being insecure, right? You, there's insecurities inside of you that you need to recognize in order to address and then to root them out. It's like um, what we like to say in deliverance is that you have to, we have to take those things out from the root. Why? Because the root is where the tree grows. If you take, if you just take a branch and you like keep cutting the branch and you think you got it, guess what happens? That tree's still gonna grow. But if you take it from the root, completely from the root, it will not come back again, okay? And another thing that the Lord um, told me and I was driving, hold on, let me find it because I did write it down. So it says another thing that we, we should do is to tend our soils. You know, tend, like take care of our soil so that weeds do not start to grow in it. Weeds, you know, weeds that are not the good plants, it's not the good tree, grow when something is unattended, when something is not taken care of. Let me know, Cindy, if I'm good with time. Okay, so when we don't tend our souls, these weeds try to grow out. So we need to take it from the root. We need to recognize what are the weeds and what are that those things that are producing character. And the word it says that, you know, there's trials and tribulations, but what? They're going to produce character. They're going to produce perseverance. In order to conquer that imposter, which is the enemy telling you, it's not you, you're not called to this. You have to tell him, devil, you're a liar. You have to expose the liar. In order for everybody to know that he's a liar and for you to know and declare, he has to know, like, your tricks are not working in my life. So we got to talk like that with authority. The Lord has given each and every single one of us authority to declare. It says in the word to bind and to loosen things from heaven, to bind the enemy, to bind. I like to say every time my thoughts are clouded, I like to put, put the mind of Christ. And I say, I take captive all thoughts to the obedience of Christ because the thoughts that God has for me is to, for me to prosper and not to harm me. He has a good future planned for us. So another thing that the Lord showed me is that we have to seek our, uh, how, how are we thinking? What is the pattern of our thoughts? Because whatever, uh, as a man thinks, so is he. So if you're thinking you're always defeated, that you're a victim, then that's what you will be. Because it's faith into that. You have faith into that. And you become that which you think. And so he, the Lord also told me that that's why we need to renew our minds to replace this intimidation and securities and this th telling us the lies of it's not you or this is not for you. Is that we need to renew our minds. And it's also scientifically proven neuroplasticity is basically basically we can rewire our brains to thinking the way that we want to think. We have power over our thoughts and the word it also says, you know, to meditate on the noble things, thoughts of good. So when we meditate on those things, when we literally let God just you know, change our minds. This is when we start seeing his hand at everything that we do. And the thing with imposter syndrome is that it's a battle that no one can win for you. You have to fight it out yourself with the Lord. Because imagine if I, you know, you have a beautiful boyfriend, a, a, a beautiful husband, and he's always telling you, oh, you're so beautiful. You're so beautiful. You're so beautiful. But if you don't believe it, it's not going to you're not going to get it into your heart. 
So it's like the Lord tell, tells us, you are more than a conqueror. You're more, you're capable. You can do all things to Christ who strengthens you. But if we, if it doesn't penetrate in our hearts, if we don't renew our minds into really believing his word, then, you know, it can happen. But if we do, we allow him to speak to us, he will make it happen. Another thing that I was, you know, um, that the Lord was telling me is that sometimes we, we focus so much on becoming on, I'm sorry, on performance, meaning how well am I doing? But then we don't really um, become aware of who we're becoming. Does that make sense? Instead of, because sometimes we can get overwhelmed, like, oh, I didn't do this, I didn't do that. But no, do one thing, at, uh, one step at a time, and then also see how you're not the same person as three months ago. There's a becoming. You never arrive. You never arrive in anything. So there's always a becoming. And I rec recommend Michelle Obama's book, you know, Becoming, is that it's even at that level, there's always from glory to glory and faith to faith. We don't arrive. So we always have, you know, that um, learning curve that we always are going to go into. The process is about the transformation that happens now when you arrive. Okay. So let's see what else. Um, so if you would, you know, recognize um, these things in, in yourself, maybe rejection, insecurity. Um, I believe in speaking out loud. If you believe in affirmations, this is kind of, you know, the same thing um, to literally there's power in the tongue. Affirmation is nothing but, but you know, literally getting the power in your tongue. So if you could just do this really quick, um, I'm just going to pray and maybe you can repeat after me. This is on you. If you want to do this, because you're going to have to believe it. And I do believe in, in Jesus' name that today is going to be a breakthrough in your life. Amen. So if you can just close your eyes, Cindy, I'm about to just finish. But I just want everybody to repeat after me. You can close your eyes if you want. Um, so I just want you to repeat. I renounce and let go of imposter syndrome. I believe that I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I am more than a conqueror. God has given me the spirit of might and not of fear, of sound mind and self-control. I have sound mind. I have self-discipline. I have self-control. And I believe that God is the author and finisher of my faith. I believe he will finish what he started in me. I am a daughter of God. My identity is in God, who is the same yesterday, today, and forever. So he is a constant God, and he has constant thoughts for me. God is for me and not against me. I am the head and not the tail. I fully receive God's grace for me to become who he has called me to be and to do what he has chosen me to do. In Jesus' name I pray, amen and amen. Amen. Well, thank you. I hope and pray that you guys have received something. I, if you did that prayer, it's a declaration for the enemy to hear, for you to believe it. And I believe that God is going to do something amazing. If you can testify and see what God has done in your life to Cindy, um, we would love to hear that from, you know, continue to, to connect and testify. Testify. Amen. All right. Oh. Let's give it up. Let's unmute everybody. Let me see. I don't know. Mute it. Unmute yourself. Let's. Oh, I don't have like. Uh, thank you, Bianca. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That's so thank good. You. Thank, thank you. you. Thank, thank you. you. So this everything is so fresh, right? Thank you, Bianca. Thank you. Uh, let's share some thank takeaways. You. Hey. <laughs> let's share some takeaways. Let's hear it. I Ellis, go ahead. Uh, I like that, that she said it's about the purpose and how many people can we impact. I mean, there's a lot of good takeaways. That's the one I wrote down because I'm busy listening, but I love that because we do have a purpose and, and it is about the impact we're making with people. Yeah, really, really good. Any other takeaway or a question that maybe you have for Bianca? Let's do it, let's do it. We're talking only about imposter syndrome today. Yes, Tyler. Um, I just noticed Danielle's uh, note and it would be lovely if Bianca could write out that declaration or type it out and if we could.
to have that in our group so we can utilize it. That would be lovely. I will send it to Sydney and then she can post it. Yes, definitely. Thank you. Good, good. Who else wants to share? Yeah, I will. That was that was awesome, Bianca. Thank you. Um, a lot of confirmation. Um, you you did say one thing. If he brought if he brought me here, he'll keep me here. Oh, I, I like that because often we'll get somewhere and then it's it's really tempting just to give up. <laughs> like, well, nothing's happening, so I'm just gonna find something else. I'll go look for that job in the paper or whatever. So, yeah, if he brought me here, he'll keep me here. So, yeah. Thank you. That was great. I also like the uh, when you were saying afraid to shine. That was powerful. I like that one. It's true. Because sometimes you know that you are you have everything that you that that you need to be resourceful or successful in, in every sense. I'm not saying only, you know, I think you know, you have God in your side, you have, you know, knowledge, talent, whatever, but it's just afraid to succeed, right? Yeah, that's why in the word of God, I love Isaiah. I can't remember the, the numbers, the, the verse, but it says, arise and shine for the glory of the Lord is upon you. So it's arise. It means that, you know, we were laid back. You know, we were in a state of, you know, not being lifted. So it's like, when we when he calls us to shine for him, it's like we have to arise and shine for the glory of the Lord has come upon us. So that verse just came came to me when you were saying that. Um, and it's when we also, you know, when we give God glory for everything, it keeps us in that place. Like he deserves the glory, you know, he deserves the glory. So when we're put aside, it's like, you know, we're shining because, oh, no. <laughs> oh, it may maybe the, no um battery maybe. Oops, yeah. Uh, and I appreciate a lot of Bianca's here. She works a lot of hours for the for the church, just so you know. And she's just came back from work to do this. Hey. We have Bianca back. Oh, and another device. <laughs> My computer died. <laughs> it's okay. Yeah. Any other uh, takeaway or question that you have? I really love that you said um, you will be tested in your identity every time you go through a new season. And I am a witness of that. That is so true. And sometimes we forget that what's happening is that we are transitioning. And so when it's transition, we are in this painful moment where we are trying to squeeze ourselves out like a cocoon, trying to be a butterfly, right? And so I love that because it, it's something that we have to hold on to our, ident our identity, no matter how attack we get with it, because the enemy knows that when our identity is anchored in the Lord, we will become unstoppable. And so that is so good. And, and everything that you said is so confirmation in the season that I am. I'm actually working in a curriculum and it is about negative beliefs or false beliefs that you have for yourself. And God keeps speaking to me about identity. Like tell these women that it's all about identity because we place our identity in the wrong places. And so when that identity is taken away from us, whatever it is that you're making it as a God, you will be crushed. But when it's Jesus, you're going to stand, even if the storm comes, you're going to be grounded. And that is the key. So I want to say thank you for sharing that and just reminding the women that we just have to be anchor in Jesus, who is our only hope. Really good. Okay, so right now, the last activity that we have for today, I'm going to create some break rooms. Break rooms. Uh, I want you to share with the person that's going to be in your group, where, where has imposter syndrome show up in your life right now, this moment? Not in the past, you know, right now. When Bianca was speaking about imposter syndrome, what was the thing that was being revealed, you know, to for you? And say it 
and also share with the person what are you gonna do 